Let's sing. Let's stand. Oh, come, all ye faithful. I better go. Yeah. Joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, him Christ the Lord. Sing, God of truth, God. sing in exultation. the shepherd see the shepherds summon to his cradle saving their flocks draw nigh to gaze we too we too will thither lend our joy and voice oh come let us adore Seated. Welcome, church. Good morning. Merry Christmas. I say that? Merry Christmas? What a joyous season we are in. I welcome you to Morville Methodist Church. Uh, if you are a visitor, please register your attendance. Uh, the items to do that are there in the pews in front of you, and we want to know that you were here and a part of our fellowship. Uh, I welcome you in the name of the Lord uh, for this. The pastor has down in here that this, for the Advent season, this is our love service, and so that's what we're going to do. I've heard that it was joy, but I think joy and love are kind of close, so today we will be celebrating love. If you would, bow with me and let's open our service to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather here in your house and among your people. Father, we come here stepping out of the world into this sanctuary to fellowship with other believers, Lord, to have fun with family, and, Father, to seek truth. Oh, how we thirst for the truth in your word and in your way. Lord Jesus, let the Holy Spirit, Spirit be here among us. Let it be within us. Teach us from the proclamation of God's word. Let us celebrate Christmas together. And, Father, let us celebrate love. We ask this in Jesus' name and all God's people say together, amen. amen. If you would please join me for a responsive reading <coughs> as our host family comes to light our candle of love, which is the pink one. Uh, I will read the white lines and we will read together the black. Of the Father's love begotten, ere the world's began to be. He is Alpha and Omega. He the source, the ending He. Of the things that are, that have been, and that future years shall see, evermore and evermore. Oh, that birth forever blessed, when the Virgin, full of grace, by the Holy Ghost conceiving, bore the Savior of our race. And the babe, the world's redeemer, first revealed his sacred face, evermore and evermore. Amen.
one, so forgive me. <laughs> Go ahead. We're going to sing Silent Night. That's time number 239. Would you guys stand with us? For announcements this morning, uh, I will be turning over to Maddie briefly, but I do want to address the young adults get-together that we were looking at doing in December. That is going to be moved until January. There's a lot of things going on, and, and uh, it's just kind of come up for the families that would be a little more convenient. So we'll be moving that to January. Uh, and Maddie, you have the rest. <laughs> okay, bear with me. Maybe. Well done. Okay, so there's a finance meeting December 13th at 6.30 in the fellowship hall. That's number one. Number two. Okay, Christmas cards and cookies. So they packed and sent the cards on Tuesday. They um, sent over 200 cards to the Mart Juvenile Facility, uh, which is really, really exciting. And they packaged around 730 cookies to send overseas as well as over 125 cards to send overseas. So thank you to everyone who helped and contributed and donated towards that because we're going to make um, a lot of people's Christmases a lot happier than they would have been um, otherwise potentially. So this week they are doing the Tuesday Bible study. Robin's led uh, the study that Robin leads. It'll be at the Kissing Tree Vineyards Tasting Room at 6.30. Um, but midweek manna... 
uh, Wine Wisdom in the Word and Turquoise Table is all on pause until January. So we won't have any of the other weekly activities until January just because everyone's traveling all over with the holiday season. Um, The Prayer Garden Brick Orders, I believe... Today is the deadline for the first round of orders. Um, Granny wanted to go ahead and, or Jan wanted to go ahead and get those in today. Um, so anyone who hasn't already and wanted to order a prayer garden brick by the, by the first order, today is the deadline. Um, I believe there are still order forms on the visitor's desk for anyone who hasn't already filled that out. Um, but that's another one. And then, okay, the Morvilles Christmas music. So on December 18th, um, they're practicing today in what would normally be wiggle worship. They're going to sing the little drummer boy, all the kids. And so today is going to be the last rehearsal for that. That's next Sunday. Um, but that's what was going to take place on the 4th, and they just kind of um, separated it in two. So they're going to sing on the 18th. And then the Christmas Eve candlelight service is going to be December 24th, Christmas Eve, at 6 p.m. Um, in the sanctuary. So come join us for that. And then the Chase Your Shadow uh, 5K Fun Run. So we've officially started sending out information for that. Um, Registration is open. We already have some people registered, which is really exciting. So right now, until January 20th, there's a discounted sign-up fee. There's kind of different tiers for sign-ups based on if you're a student or a group or an individual, that kind of thing. Um, So there's a website, and I posted the link for the website on the Facebook page. You can click it, and it takes you there directly. Or you can go to the um, www.runsignup.com and search the uh, 5K Fun Run, and it'll have all the information, the dates, the times, the different tiers, the different runs you can participate in. If you have any additional questions, um, contact Judy, um, and her number's up there. But it's going to be February 4th from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., give or take. Yes. And then... I don't have as much information about this one, but just so we can save the date, um, February 24th through 26th here, Morville's hosting an evangelism summit called Awakening Weekend. It is free to register for church members. If you are a non-member, there's a $25 registration fee. Um, That should be a really exciting weekend full of like worship and learning and uh, fellowship, and we'll have more information to come, but for now, just this is the date to keep in mind if that's something you'd be interested in. We're inviting local churches in the area to participate as well. So it's not just for Moorville. Um, The communication will go out to to different churches of, I believe, also various denominations. So it won't just be like Global Methodist. It will be open to a lot of people. Um, So look out for more information for that. And I think that's it. Thank you. Okay. She did a good job, (laughs) Batty. All right. If you would, please send the children forward at this time for our children's sermon. Uh, and, and Fran, I believe, is doing that for us this morning, so we're excited for that. Come on up, kiddos. And she'll be on the other side, yeah. In a, thank you, in a town far, far, far away, up on a high mountain. And they could see all the land around everywhere. They could see the lakes and the rivers and the little meadows where the deer came to play and the houses. And then the village was way down below. Oh, they loved their little town. And it just so happens, and in this special little town was a candy maker. And he made chocolate candies, and strawberry candies, and vanilla candies. Ooh, they were so good. People loved his candy shop. And he loved his little town, especially at Christmas time. He loved to walk down and look at the houses all decorated, and the Christmas trees all lit up so pretty. 
and the yard's all filled with pretty flowers and special Christmas things. And then when he walked into town, ooh, he was so happy. The stores were all lit up and decorated, and the trees were all lit up and so pretty. And in the store windows, you could look in, and you could see Christmas decorations and toys and Santas, not the real Santas, but live Santas, but the mannequins that could do this and ho, 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 you know. Oh, he loved his town. And one night, though, after church, when the children were singing their hymns, oh, he was really, really excited about his town. And as he was walking home, he was humming to himself, <laughs> and he thought, oh, my town is so extra specially lit up tonight. Everything just shining so bright. Ooh, he loved it. And he happened to look down at the little town below. What? It was dark. Had no lights. No singing. Nobody was laughing or saying Merry Christmas. What gives, he said. In our town, we're all lit up. Everybody greets everybody. Hi, Merry Christmas. But there was all quiet. He didn't know what to do. He said, this is not right. So as he walked home, he was thinking, what can I do? What's the matter with that little town? Then he realized what happened. They didn't know Jesus. They didn't know about Christmas. Well, he said, I got to fix that. After all, I'm the candy maker. So he decided he went into his little shop. He got out his bowl. He put in his ingredients, and he started stirring up his candy. And he put in the flavoring, and he laid it out, and he made a J, Jesus. That way they would know all about Jesus. But the J was just white. Hmm, he said, that, that doesn't tell the whole story of Jesus. What am I going to do? So he picked it up, and he looked around, and he went, oh, the shepherd's hook. The shepherds used this to get the little lambs out of the thorns and the bushes so they could take them back safely to the flock so that they don't die. Oh, yeah, the shepherds visited the JV Jesus. Oh, and the three wise men. Oh, I need to do that. So he took his candy and he stirred up another batch and he made a, a stripe and another stripe and another stripe were the three wise men that came to visit Jesus also. Well, he said, that's beginning to look pretty, pretty good. So he thought, well, I'll finish it out with my three stripes. And you know what? He thought that was pretty neat looking. And he began to look at it, and he thought, oh, one stripe is a little wider than the other one. Why, of course. That's God the Father who sent his son, Jesus, to come to earth so that we will know how to live in a good way. And when Jesus died on the cross, Jesus gave us his Holy Spirit, which is with us today. It teaches us right from wrong and helps us direct our paths in the way that we should go. So I'm going to give you a... Red, you know, Christmas candy. This is known all over the world as the Christmas candy. And you'll notice you'll have your three stripes for the wise men and for Jesus. And you'll have the J for Jesus and your hook for the... And you can take it home and put it on your plate or by your plate. And every day when you go to eat, you can remember the story of Jesus. Or you could hang it on your Christmas tree. And anybody coming into your house 
always looks at the Christmas tree, and you can tell them about Jesus. You can say, that's the real candy of Christmas, because Jesus is the reason that we have Christmas. So I'm going to hand these out, and don't worry, y'all aren't going to miss out. I brought plenty for y'all, too. <laughs> so you can have them after the service, but the kids get theirs now. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Okay, here you go. Thank you. Just put it down. Thank you. Pass, take one and pass it on. 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 Make sure everybody gets one. Uh, give one. Rosie got one. Everybody got one. Okay, let's let's say our little prayer. Let's bend our heads. Thank you. Dear Jesus, we're so thankful for that you came to earth and gave us Christmas. Lord, the true meaning is you, Jesus. You are the reason that we celebrate Christmas. Be with us now. Help us to live the way we should do to make Everyone know that you are a good Savior and a loving Savior. Help us, Jesus. Amen. Okay. Go home with your candy cane. Thank you, Fran. As the children go back, Russell let me know that we missed our birthdays and anniversaries. Come on up, Russell. Birthdays and anniversaries. Anyone have a birthday this morning? There's one, two... Anniversary, 17 years. Angels we have heard on high. It's 238, right by Silent Night.
Apostles scream with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified and dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our joys and concerns, uh, please fill out the forms in the books and in the pews. If you have a concern on your heart that you would wish to add to our prayer list, we see the names there of those that we are lifting up, and also our pastor as he travels uh, with the Griders uh, this week. So be in prayer for them. Please uh, fill out those prayer requests, place them in the offering as it comes by. Uh, for our joys and concerns. If you would, please pray with me. Heavenly Father, as dear thirst and pant longing for the stream, so we come into your house to seek your wisdom and your presence. Father, there is such need in the heart of each and every one of us, but Lord, some of us in particular who may face the trials of illness, Father, those facing financial burden, Father, all of these concerns that we have, we know that we can lay them down at the feet of the cross and we have an able king, able to hear our prayers, Lord, able to meet our needs and to provide strength when we are afraid, encouragement when we are in doubt. Lord Jesus, we love you and we thank you so much for pouring yourself out into the babe into the manger that so long ago the light of men, the joy of the world came to set us free from sin and from bondage. We thank you for Christmas. We thank you for all of the souls here that you have reached, Lord, those that you have saved. And we pray that this church will be a vehicle of salvation, bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the community around us. Lord Jesus, guide your servant as he brings your word forward this morning and let us grow in depth in our understanding of the beauty of the Christmas season. Now, Lord Jesus, let us pray as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us thy peace. Amen. Amen. At this time, if as our ushers come forward, please bow with me in our offertory prayer. Heavenly Father, you have provided for us, Lord, more abundantly than 95% of the world. Lord Jesus, just living in the United States, we are so blessed, so safe here in this nation founded by believers. Father, we take this moment today to give back unto the house that keeps us fed. We give back unto your kingdom and to your church that the gospel of Jesus Christ might be advanced here locally and through our connection with the Global Methodist Church. Please receive our tithes this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name and all God's people say, amen. As we come to a time of communion, I want to invite all to come to the Lord's table. As we know in the, our beloved Methodist Church, all are welcome to the Lord's table. Be you a member of this church or not. We're going to do it a little different this morning, and I just want to go ahead and give those instructions before we get into the Word. Uh, we will have what we call intinction. Uh, we will have uh, myself and three of our choir members Uh, We'll be in the front. There will be two lines. And as you come forward to receive the body and the blood of Christ, uh, you can take them at your leisure. You can come and you can kneel if that is your wish, or you can go and sit down immediately after. So we will do it a little bit different uh, per the instructions of our pastor. Uh, So I want to invite all to come. But first, uh, let us pray over this communion table set before you. Heavenly Father, we we humbly come to the table of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray that as the Apostle Paul has told us that we have the proper heart, that any bitterness, any lack of forgiveness, Father, anything that is plaguing our heart, that we not bring it to the Lord's table, Father, that today, right now, whatever is troubling us, be it fear or or animosity, Father, uncertainty, anything, anything that we don't want to bring to the Lord's table, Father, that we give it to you now. That as a church, we come to communion to receive the body and the blood of Christ with the right heart to receive this this wonderful memorial service, Lord, this grace, 
with a humble heart, knowing that it is an honor to come to the Lord's table among God's people. And we pray, Lord, that as our pastor has blessed sacraments here, Lord, that we would leave this place today knowing that we have come to encounter the Spirit of our God, that we have dined with Him, that we have grown from His Word, and, Father, that we have kept this service holy and reverent. We ask this in Jesus' name and all God's people say, Amen. As they were eating in the upper room, Jesus took bread. He blessed it and he broke it. He gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Choir, if you would come first, please. And the Lord took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Brothers. And Bobby, he also took the cup. And he said, this is my blood poured out for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Thank you. I was looking at you to do that. The body of Christ broken for you. And the blood of Christ poured out for you. This is the body of Christ poured out for you. The body of Christ broken for you. cross with our Lord upon it. And on that cross, he was broken. He was broken for the forgiveness of sins, 
for every soul of every generation. Dear church, that includes us here this morning. body of Christ broken for you. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Please bow with me. 
Heavenly Father, be with me this morning as I prepare to preach your word. Father, this broken vessel is ear prepared for such an honor. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would uh, fill this place with your spirit, that your message would come forth, Lord, and not, not mine. Uh, let your church leave here feeling filled and rejoice in this Christmas season at the beautiful gift of love in the newborn Savior and that precious baby laying in a manger. There was no room there in the end, Lord, but oh, there is room here. We say this in Jesus' name, and all God's people say, amen. Church, this morning we will be in Matthew chapter 1, uh, and for time's sake, I'm going to move pretty quickly through just a little bit more information about the virgin birth. We've heard about the prophecy maybe in Isaiah chapter 7 that a virgin would be with child. But I ask, do you know the story of how that prophecy came to be? Do you know the historical context in which God gave that promise? It's rather interesting. And I also ask you this morning, as far as these lineages in chapter 1 of Matthew and also in Luke of chapter 3, there are huge sections in the Bible about the bloodline and the lineage of Jesus Christ coming through both, we know God is the father, but coming through the line of Joseph as what we will call his adoptive father, and also coming through Mary. So this morning, church, I want to spend just a little bit of time identifying those two things. Number one, the prophecy about the virgin birth comes from a the history of Israel, essentially Judah, they had a king named Ahaz. And Ahaz, he, church, he was what we would call a scoundrel. Ahaz even uh, sacrificed his own chi, young child to a false god named Molech, uh, casting him into a fire. He was a man, a king, that brought much, much, much turmoil to the heart of God for the way that he led Israel. Well, at one particular time in his, in his kingdom... He had a problem with two kings to the north. There was a king Rezin and there was a king Pekah of Israel. And these two kings, they did not like Ahaz. They didn't like this, this scoundrel. They wanted to dethrone him. So Ahaz, as a good politician, decided rather than go turn to the one true God of Israel, he had brought all these other false gods in, to go to God for sustenance and protection from these other two kings, Ahaz decided he would go to essentially the king of Assyria, which was a big, giant empire at that time. Well, Isaiah the prophet gets told by God essentially to go before Ahaz and, and inquire in Isaiah 7 about why are you turning to alliances with men instead of an alliance with your God whom you've forgotten? And Ahaz pretty much says, well, I, you know, I just, that's just not the way that I wanted to go. I'm trying to, this, this other guy's bigger than they are. We can take them out. And, and Isaiah presents a message from God and he says, he tells King Ahaz, he says, ask me for a sign that I can prove to you. He says it can be as low as the grave or as high as heaven. God says, ask me for a sign and I'll give it to you to prove to you that I am the preserver of the nation of Israel, that I am the God of my people, and that no power but me can protect my people. Ahaz says, look, Isaiah, I appreciate the offer, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to ask God for a sign. I'm not going to test God. And through the prophet Isaiah, God says, I'll give you a sign give you my sign that I am the preserver and protector of my people. And church, essentially, that sign was that a virgin would conceive a child and have a son. And you will call him Emmanuel. Now, church, we all know that Emmanuel means God with us. Later on in chapter 9, we hear of all the other wonderful names for Jesus. But it's important to know there was another prophecy when you read through Isaiah, and it's about 
Isaiah himself having a kid. And God says, you know what, Isaiah, before this child that you will have is even weaned, these two kings that O Ahaz is concerned about, they're not even going to be in power. Would you believe within three years both of those kings were dead? God's pretty tough. You go to Isaiah chapter 9, and here's some other names given for this Emmanuel, this God with us. Uh, it says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. A light has dawned on those living in the land of darkness. And he says, talking about Christ, he says, you have enlarged the nation and increased its joy. The people have rejoiced before you as they rejoice at harvest time. Go down to verse 6 and he says, For a child will be born to us, a son will be given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The dominion will be vast and its prosperity will never end. And church, here's the hinge point for this morning. He will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now on and forever. The zeal of the Lord of armies will accomplish this. That's the original Christmas prophecy from the Old Testament about Emmanuel. Emmanuel is a description Describing God the Father. One of those names was Eternal Father. The very substance of God coming in the Son. God the Son among us and with us. Well, there's two neat things about Jesus. Three, really, about his lineage. And and you guys can show the first slide. In Matthew chapter 1, we have the lineage of Joseph. Here it talks about 42 generations from Abraham all the way down to Jesus, if you get time to read that. And there's a couple of interesting things because I just want, I want to point out how God works. How awesome it is. When you go through the names of the, the family of Joseph, it, 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 it establishes what I'm going to call a right to the throne by, let's just call it a family line. Was Joseph Jesus' father? By blood? Absolutely not. Who was the father? Spirit of God. We'll cover that in a minute. But in in times of Israel, kingship, lordship was passed down from a father to a son. Doesn't matter if it's an adopted son, a stepson, or in this case, a son born of heaven rather than of Joseph. But when you read Joseph's line coming down... There's some interesting names in here in the heritage of Joseph. You have Rahab. Anyone remember Rahab from the Bible? Rahab was a prostitute, church. You have Boaz, born of Rahab, but then you have Obed, born of Ruth. Was Ruth an Israelite? Let me ask that. We're getting into some different stuff, but was, was, where was Ruth from? She was a Moabite. So all of a sudden in the line of Joseph, you have people that were not perfect. The prostitute was not perfect. And then you even have what we will call a Gentile in the line of Jesus. Now, church, Joseph was a son of David. That's important. Because with Joseph being the father of Jesus in Israeli society, being an heir of David, what would that pass to Jesus? The father's right to kingship. Okay? But what was the promise? That an heir of David would be on the line? Right? Well, is Jesus descended from David's blood? Not through Joseph. Right? We'll get to this in a minute. But that's why it's important in Luke chapter 3. Because in Luke chapter 3, if you ever get a chance to study, there's a line that comes through Mary that brings the actual blood of King David into 
the Christ child. The Christ child is born as an heir of David. I want you to understand, Joseph is of the line of Solomon, okay? And you get toward the middle of this, uh, of this genealogy, and there's a, there's a gentleman named Jeconiah. Jeconiah was cursed by God in Jeremiah 22, and Jecon- he was told that he would never have a son on the throne of Israel. So the line could not, according to God's own judgments, could not come to Jesus through Joseph no matter what. Because Jeconiah was cut off for some sinful stuff that he was doing. And Jeconiah was of the line of Solomon. But David had another son named Nathan. And through Nathan's line, we now have the blood right to the kingship of Israel. And you say, well, pastor, what's your point? My point is that this baby was one of a kind. He had the birthright to be the king of Israel by his fathers, just being his father. The birthright is this past. He had the blood right through his mother. Now, church, something great happened with that baby. He was born of the Spirit of God. You know what I call that? I call that the God right to be the king of heaven and the king of earth. So understand, as you read those genealogies, that's just a little bit of extra information for you there, but understand it was something miraculous that God promised through the prophet Isaiah. And 80% of the prophecies in the Bible have already happened. 20% are still coming. God got this one perfect. Not only did he bring the virgin-born child, but he also bring the virgin, brought the virgin-born child in a way that was right and good and granted him the authority that he needed to be the king of the Jews. We'll go ahead and get into our message this morning. Chapter 18 of, of Matthew 1, verse 18 says, The birth of Jesus Christ came about in this way. After his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered before they came together that she was pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Now church, that's a problem. Now now Mary knew what was going on, but at this time Joseph doesn't. And I I haven't gone into the the gospel of Luke and his, there's a much more detailed story of, of God announcing through the angel Gabriel to Mary that this, she was going to be pregnant with this, this miraculous birth, but I'm going to leave that for our pastor in the coming weeks. But what I want to focus on this morning is that this was a problem in the nation of Israel. Now, understand, Mary's not married to Joseph. She's, just, she's engaged. She's betrothed. So think about this young man. And church, they were in love when they were betrothed. They spent a lot of time together. There was nothing physical but it was somebody who you usually wanted to marry, in Israel anyway. And, and Joseph is a man that loved her. You remember what love is like when it's young and it's fun and it's exciting. And, and Joseph all of a sudden finds out, man, what? You're, 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 you're pregnant? How's that happen? Scholars attack our, our Bible and they try to say, oh, Mary had a relationship with a Roman. So no, no. That's not what happened. It was, a, it was a virgin conceiving a child of the Holy Spirit. But nonetheless, Joseph is upset. Joseph is a good man. He's a righteous man. He's confused. You know, I remember when I worked in the prison system that I, I, I watched visitation one time, and I, I had a guy, young guy, probably about 25, and his wife was coming to see him. He was real excited. His wife shows up, and she was, she was pregnant. And I, I remember seeing the guy totally confused that she's coming to see him and she's pregnant. And, of course, I, after the visitation's over, I said, how long have you been in here? He said, ain't none of your business. Mind your business, man. That's, don't worry about my girl. That's, that's my thing. But, but I remember the look on his face when he, when he saw her. It was, it was how? Church, that's where Joseph was at. How does this woman I'm betrothed to, who I know is from a pure and moral family, how does she, how does she have a, a baby that's coming? But Joseph is a good guy, so he decides, I got to divorce her. That's the right thing to do. 
I can't be, I can't be married to somebody that's pregnant before I'm out. So understand, now at this time, and used to in Israel, before this time, they'd actually take them out and they'd, they would stone a young lady for that, which was a terrible way to deal with things. But at this point, it was just kind of public humiliation. He would divorce her, give a certificate, and she would be dishonored and her whole family would be dishonored. But that's not what Joseph's about. Joseph's a poor guy, but he's a cool guy. And he's like, he does love her, and he's like, you know what? I'm just going to, we're going to divorce, but we're going to do it on the cool. I'm going to keep it secret. Uh, the Bible says, verse 19 says, So her husband Joseph, Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. Verse 20, But after he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Because what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God himself, I'll say. He says, she will give birth to a son and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. He's talking about Isaiah. See the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son. And they will name him Emmanuel. Now church, Emmanuel is a description. God with us. Jesus is literally, in Aramaic it's Yeshua, or you can even go to Joshua, is, is going to be Jehovah saves. You're literally, you're not naming the kid God with us. You're naming the kid Jehovah saves because it's through him that all the sins of the world will be washed away at the cross. And it says, which is translated, God is with us. When Jesus woke up, he did as the Lord's angel had commanded him. I'm sorry, when Joseph woke up. Jesus wasn't awake yet, he wasn't bored. When Joseph woke up, he did as the Lord's angel had commanded him. He married her. But he did not have sexual relations with her until she gave birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. Now, church... <clears throat> I'll say briefly there one thing about Mary because there's some misconceptions in some of the denominations. Mary did not die a virgin. She had other children. She was the, the wife of Joseph in every way. But church, I want to ask you this morning, why is it so important that Jesus was born of a virgin? What does it matter? If Jesus was born by Mary and Joseph like all of us were born that uh, two people came together in love and conceived a child, would there be any relevance to his birth? He would be born in sin. He wouldn't be who he was. You see, there's something about Jesus, and I think I've said it before here, he's either everybody he claims, to, everything he claims to be, or none of it. It's either all right and accurate, or he's not the Messiah. And we are dead in our sins, as the Apostle Paul puts it. This miraculous birth in which the, the very force that created the universe comes over the, the womb and the body of Mary and manifests this child by the very Spirit of God itself. That is the miracle of the virgin birth. Without that element, church, it, it, it doesn't make sense. Without that Element there, church, you've already wasted an hour, some of you, two hours of your day. We read in Luke that when the shepherds were approached by the angel and the angel opened heaven, that they were rejoicing and singing and that all of the heavenly hosts were having this beautiful, great party. And church, I ask you, what was the big deal? What's so important about this baby in the manger? Have you ever thought about how hard God worked to get to that point in history? The Bible, the, the history of the world buckles at the birth of Christ. He is the centerpiece that holds everything together. Everything before Jesus was born, all the way back to creation and church, everything since, even your calendar goes by the years since his birth. It is the buckle that holds it all together. 
And Jesus came at a particular time in which God had created, just like he manifested that bloodline to be perfect, to come to, to Joseph by birthright and for the blood side to come through Mary. Everything that God does is tied perfect with a bow. You find a time where God has controlled human culture and the Greek empire has spread through Alexander the Great and everybody's speaking the same language, essentially. Greek culture, Hellenism, has prepared the world at that point for a language to be used in order to advance a message. You have the Roman Empire that is now in power when Jesus is born, that is primed and perfect for the Apostle Paul and the other apostles to spread the church like wildfire, a time in history like it had never been. And Paul's citizenship, he could move and start the churches. You have John the Baptist who's being born around the same time who would have a message of baptism which made no sense to the Jewish faith at that time. Baptism as John was doing it. We know you're buried with Christ in baptism or you're, you're, the water is poured on you and you're washed with the blood. That's, that was new. And God was bringing all that to be. And as these angels have seen God preparing for... Don't forget the rift between the creator and his creation and all the wicked things that had happened, even the flood. God had had such a burden and a broken heart for the people that he loved. And the heavenly host has seen this taking place and all of a sudden the prophecy of the virgin birth and the coming Messiah of Israel, salvation under the world of men, it's there, it's real, it's happening and Jesus is being born. Do y'all remember what the shepherds saw when the angel appeared, the bright light? Heaven was going crazy. This was the greatest time in the history of the world that God himself, Emmanuel, had come unto men to save them from their sins. Church, we talk about love this morning. That baby was the greatest example of love in the history of the world. We talk about Jesus and we, 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 sometimes we beat ourselves up about, you know, that it was our, our sins that were on his back on the cross and we feel guilty for that. And, and we talk about, uh, the, you know, that we need to have a relationship in prayer. There's so many things you can preach about. But that day, that night, that night was special. It was all about love. That Christ would empty himself to come down to die for the very reason of saving souls. You know the beautiful thing about Jesus? He didn't want anything from you. He didn't come to take your money or to take your health even to take your time. You know what he came for? He came for your heart. Because God loved you so much and he wanted to be the vehicle through which you can love him back in church that you can get home. I want you to understand that gift of love, that was a gift of life. That was a gift of hope. In Jesus, even in baby Jesus, as the elf would say on that show, There's life. Church, you don't want to die and stop existing or go to some form of judgment for eternity. You don't, and I don't. I don't. I want to stand before God, and I don't want Him to see all my junk that I've done. I don't. But I don't want to die and just be gone. I want to see my God. He's been with me all my life, and I want an opportunity for me to be with Him. And I can't get there. But this baby, this baby was the miracle that I need to see my God. Amen? This is the time we don't think about the fact that Jesus is wearing all our stripes and all our sins. Yes, he is, and it's important. 
This is a time of year. This is the spirit of Christmas where we don't have to necessarily beat ourselves up. You know what Christmas is? It's a time for gratefulness. It's a time of holiness and reverence. It's a time of knowing that that child belonged in heaven and had no business down here with us aside from the fact that the Father loved us and wanted to redeem us. Amen? So when you think about Jesus and you think about Christmas and you think about the baby and all the beautiful songs and the things that we sing, I, I just I ask you to remember one thing in this season. One thing. I love to come home from work and have my daughters and my son and my wife come up and tell me I love you. I love it. I love when Connie will come over, will give me a hug, and she has a way that she'll go, I love you, meaning it's hard to do, but I do it anyway. (laughs) When God gave us that child, he said it with the loudest voice, the loudest trumpet he could say it. God said, I love you, and I will save you. No matter what you've done, no matter where you're at, no matter who you've become, you matter to me. Amen? Merry Christmas. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the miracles of Scripture, for all the hope in the Bible. But more than anything in this time, Lord, in this season, we say thank you for the child. Thank you for being a God whose promises are as firm as rock beneath our feet. Thank you for the promise of an eternity for the faithful that, Lord, there will be a day that we will stand before the throne of Jesus Christ and we will say, oh, Lord, we knew you and how we longed for you. Lord Jesus, we say, Merry Christmas in this season, and Lord, we say we love you too. As the angels rejoiced in joy, Lord, let us among our families and our friends and our church, let us rejoice. Joy to the world that God has saved men from their sins, that his promises are good and true, alive and real. Church, I invite you this morning as we pray, if you have a prayer on your heart or if you want to say thank you unto the Lord, the altar is open. Pour yourself at his feet. We say this in Jesus' name and all God's people say together, amen. Prayer team, please come forward. Please stand for it came upon the midnight clear.
nation. Go forth as the people of God. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would guide our steps. Lord, let our hearts dance and let our smiles be ever present that we know what Christmas is all about. We say this in Jesus' name and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Sing with us. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the sky With angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Hail the heavenborn Hail the heavenborn Prince of Peace Hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all He brings, written with healing in His wings. Mild He lays His glory by, mourn that we no more may die. Born to raise us from the earth, born to give the second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. You are dismissed. Have a good week.